So now that we've built this conceptual understanding, uh, let's actually start doing something very hands-on. And that is, well, how can we make our own Python web server? And um, the easiest way to do that is to do use some number of um, you know web frameworks that we can install with PyPy. And, uh, and a student of mine actually a while back, well, a couple of students did this study where they kind of looked on GitHub and uh, they saw what modules people were importing and they, they figured out, well, how popular are different uh, Python packages. And these are all the different Python packages. And, um, and, and you've seen a number of these. You've seen NumPy and, and Flat and, and um, Matplotlib, Requests and Pandas. Um, by far the most popular one is uh, called Django, which is a, is a web development framework for Python. Um, I may be teaching another one, which is Flask. You can see it's a bit less popular. Uh, but it's much simpler and more elegant than Django, so um, I think it's kind of ideal for uh, for teaching here. And, um, and so I have a Django application here, and it's on this website. Um, this is kind of a pre-release of, of Project Four, so um, you know it's going to change some from what I'm recording now. Uh, but but there's some nice examples on on this page. So if I go down, I can see well here's that same. Uh, Flask application that I saw on uh, that I had seen on my um, on my slide, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over here and um, I'm going to try to create this new web server. So let me head here and uh, create a new directory, uh, which I will call October 14, and and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create that new web server using a text file, right? Because I'm gonna wanna call it something like, um, uh, maybe I'll call it server.py. And I'm gonna paste all of that code from that example and we're gonna talk about it. Okay, so I'm gonna have this here. Let me let me save that thing. And, uh, and I have to make a little room here, right? So I wanna fit a few things on this screen, like so. So I'm gonna have that there and um, and then I want to open up um, a terminal, which I'm going to grab right here. And I'm going to SSH to my virtual machine. And I'm going to head to where my code is, which is here. Okay. And, um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Python 3. And then I'll say the name of my program, server.py. And, and so when this thing is running, right, it's going to kind of go through here. And there's some weird things that you haven't really seen before, like this, for example. Um, when I get down to the end, I'm checking if, um, if the name of this module is main. And if I run it like this, then this name will be main, right? So it means I want to run it like a program. Um, if I do something like this, let's say I say Python 3, and then I say import server, then, uh, then this name here is not going to be main and it won't actually run. All right, so I'm going to exit this. I say Python 3. And I'm going to say server.py. And, uh, and then it starts running. And, and at least in theory, uh, this program would run forever. Right, it's going to keep serving pages. And, um, and I can see here that I put in the host of 0000 because I wanted to listen publicly. And so that's good. And then you can see it automatically chose port 5000 for me. And, um, and so let me try visiting visiting this application, right? So I'm gonna kind of shrink this down a bit, like so. And, uh, and let me grab this IP address and open a new tab. I'm gonna say uh, colon 5000. And then I guess I'll just hit kind of directly like that. And um, actually maybe I need a, slash and uh and i can see down here it's complaining right i'm getting all these exceptions every time i try to revisit this page it's crashing i get this exception i guess it's crashing on line nine which is right here and um and so what happens right whenever i type anything in this url the way that this flask framework works you can see i'm importing flask and then creating a flask app and then running it the way the flask application works is that it will call functions as necessary to handle web requests. And they, there's this kind of weird um, notation, right, that I'll be explaining more about. But this is saying whenever I go to the home page, 
uh, I should be running this function. And that's why this function is running and I'm crashing on line nine, right? Flask is calling it automatically for me. And well, why is this crashing? Well, because I haven't created an index.html page yet, uh, which I can certainly do. So I'm gonna say file new and, uh, and I'll create my page here, uh, which will be index.html. And uh, maybe I'll say like h1, uh, hello world. Uh, and maybe I'll say something like this, the current time is, and then I would really like to inject something here. Okay, so I'm gonna come back here and kind of shrink this down. And, and so if I try to refresh this, well, there I go. Um, Flask is actually kind of cool, right? It's recognizing that my file changed and is reloading it, right? So now when I visit that page, I get this thing right here. If I want to, um, I, I could create other pages. So, so this right now is an example of a, of a static page. Let me create a, a dynamic page. So I'll say something like a.html. And, uh, and last time I tried to make sure I had an index.html. I'm not gonna even do that anymore. I'm just gonna do something like this, right? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say return ha times, let's say 10. I do that and, uh, and then I'm gonna visit that page, right? So I'm gonna head over here and say slash ha.html. And, um, and why didn't that work? Um, I think that actually I'm not supposed to put a, a leading slash there. Let me see if that does the trick. Well, that's a little funny, isn't it? Well, let me try restarting it. I, I thought I was trying to pick up that route, that new route. Maybe it only does it for existing ones. Refresh this. And uh, well, why is it unhappy now? I can't even, I can't really even restart it. Let me. And so as I'm kind of looking carefully here, it says that it's overwriting an existing function, home. And so, so my problem here is really, I kind of named both these things home. And, and so maybe I'll call this like um, ha page. I can really call whatever I want, right? And that was probably why it wasn't automatically refreshing earlier either. So now I'm gonna come back here where it seems to have frozen. And why is that frozen? Let me just try SSHing again. I do my SSH. Uh, sorry, my internet was just kind of flaking out there for a minute. So anyway, this is up and running again. And so I'm actually gonna run it now. And my Flask app is running and I'm gonna refresh this page. And, and now I can actually see I'm dynamically generating that content. Uh, e even though, right, if I come back here and say like file, well, where's my file open? Uh, even though I come back here, you know, let me refresh this. I only have an index.html, right? I don't have any ha.html, uh, but nonetheless, I have a ha.html page, right? So that's very cool. Um, one of the things that we're gonna wanna think about is how do we get information uh, into our Flask application, okay? And uh, the way we're gonna do it is by using this request thing and just a little bit uh, of kind of clarification, flask.request has no relation to the requests module, right? And, and so we've used the request module a lot, so just be kind of careful on that. Um, notice that it's also singular versus plural. And uh, this thing can help us get various information uh, from, from the page, okay? And, and so how can I get information in from the client side? Well, I can do things like this. I can say, um, question mark and uh, and then maybe I say something like malt equals equals five okay and what I'm putting here after the question mark is an example of a query string and we want to pull that out on the other side right it'd be nice to get five so so right now it's just being ignored right? I'm not doing anything with it um, what I can do over here is I can say request dot args dot get and it's kind of like a dictionary right where malt is the key and then five is the value so so i want to get malt and i'm going to put that in a variable and maybe let me just print that for a moment 
I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to run this, refresh my page, and then uh, hopefully down here, let, let me just kill this and restart it again. So I'm going to run this, and I should be able to refresh this page, and then you can see right there it says 5, right? Or if I say you know, 999, then I get 999 down here. And so what I can do when I'm generating this page dynamically is I could use that. Maybe that's a factor in what kind of information I, I display, right? So let me try doing this now. I want to have 999 laughs. Uh, it's kind of funny. I guess before it was recognizing that it had to automatically reload the page and now not. So I'll just kind of manually restart it. I hit Control C to kill it, then run it again, and I run this. And... Um, Maybe the problem, reason I was having trouble reloading is because there was an error in my new new page. I cannot multiply sequence by non-int of type stir. So what does that mean? So, so I guess I'm multiplying a string by something that is a string. Okay. So, so maybe let me just do this. I'm going to print you know the type of malt here just to see what's happening, and then run this. Okay, and so I'm going to do that, and um, and I can see that I'm still getting the same error because I haven't fixed it, of course, yet. But I can see that that's a string, right? So all of these um, query string arguments that I'm passing in, uh, those are strings, right? So when I come down here, maybe I should just convert it to an integer. Maybe that would be a fine place to convert it to an integer. Okay, so let me rerun that. Then I'm going to actually run this page here. And now I can see, I can control uh, how many laughs I get. Okay. And um, and if I had multiple query strings, I'm not trying to do it here, but I would just put uh, an and sign between them. So I could say something like, you know, x equals three and y equals four. I'm not trying to do that now. Okay, so that's good. Kind of coming back to this home page, right? So we've seen, let me hit back a few times. Uh, here I am on this home page. Uh, what I'd like to do is print off something about the current time there. So, so as it stands right now, this is an example of a static page. Uh, this is an example of a dynamic page. I'm going to actually use some templating uh, to turn this into um, into a dynamic page, right? In particular, I want to put the time here. And, and so maybe actually, I'm just trying to rephrase this a little bit. So I was trying to using something we're familiar with. I'm going to say there have been some number of seconds since January 1st, 1970. And maybe this is kind of jogging your memory about uh, uh, what function I'm going to use. I'm going to, up here, I'm going to say import time. And uh, remember that time.time .time, uh, tells me how many seconds have passed. So, so let, me, let me kind of do this here. I'm going to say, you know, before, what was the HTML? And then, I'm going to make some changes to it before I actually return it back to the user. I'm going to say HTML equals HTML.format. And when I do format, what it's doing is I might have some args here. Uh, and those args are going to replace these slots that I have. I guess I accidentally have one slot there, so I should have one arg. And, uh, and that arg will be, well, whatever the time function returns. That's how many seconds have passed. Okay, so I'm going to run this thing. And uh, and there we go. And so I'm going to load this. And uh, I can see, well, that's how many seconds have passed. And every time somebody visits this, it's a little bit different, right? If I keep doing it, it keeps reloading, right? And I can see down here what's happening. Right before I get this content that has the, the slot in it. And then after I, after I run this line of code, then what do I get? Well, then I get the new content that I actually actually return. So, so kind of to take stock of where we are, now I have two examples of, of dynamic pages, um, one which uses templating, and the other which is just kind of uh, generated completely, uh, completely from scratch. Okay, so I'll, I'll leave it off there.